Let's get over to our next guest. We're joined by Ariel Cohen, a senior fellow at, uh, at the Atlantic Council on uh, that uh, call that we had between uh, Xi Jinping and Joe Biden on Ukraine and, of course, uh, weekend developments in uh, this crisis and conflict. Ariel, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the use of these hypersonic missiles, let's start that off. Uh, is it an escalation or is it a sign that ultimately perhaps that uh, we have a country which is perhaps running out of uh, armaments and ordnance? No, uh, for Russia, uh, as well as for the Western suppliers of Ukraine, this is unfortunately uh, the ideal battlefield to test new systems. Uh, Kinzhal, uh, the dagger, the hypersonic missile, uh, is something Russia uh, and personally Putin were boasting about for a while. They have even larger, stronger, bigger systems that are hypersonic that unfortunately we don't have the ability to shoot down, or the Ukrainians definitely don't have these abilities, because uh, they were promised patriots. I don't think the patriots have deployed yet, and I am not sure a patriot is capable of uh, destroying a hypersonic missile. So it is significant. Russia is signaling. There's a lot of signaling going on that they can dominate the escalation ladder, up to and including eventually, God forbid, uh, nuclear weapons or weapons of mass destruction. We heard a lot of discussion of why Russia is bringing up these um, bio labs in Ukraine that were supported by the U.S. It was a red herring by Russia. These are not military labs, but potentially the, the chatter uh, about the bio labs on the Russian side could uh, justify uh, use of yeah. chemical weapons or, as I said, God forbid, Sure, but in terms of the fighting, in, in terms of the fighting so far, is it not fair to say that Russia is, in a sense, getting bogged down? Yes, indeed. Uh, next week is going to be a month since Russians uh, started that, that operation. They have not taken uh, any large Ukrainian cities. I think, with the exception of Kherson, that is not that big. Uh, Ukrainians are putting up heroic resistance. But if the Russians feel that they're bogged down or losing, that's according to the Russian military doctrine that I studied and I read in the, the Russian language original, they would escalate to de-escalate, as they call it. They may bring uh, upon the Ukrainians and possibly upon uh, those who supply the Ukrainians uh, bigger, harder, more devastating weapons, and then, God forbid, the war would escalate to a whole new level. There'll, there'll be a whole new ball game. I still hope that the Ukrainians and the Russians will sit down and bring it to closure before it really gets out of control. So, Aaron, okay, you know, this is the common thing which has emerged here, that uh, strategic thinking and military doctrines in Russia have not changed, uh, really, in decades. And this is the same playbook, as you just said. Doesn't it also, at the same time, perhaps show a sign of desperation? No, I wouldn't say desperation. I, I think that Russia uh, miscalculated grossly. Uh, there is an intelligence failure on assessing Ukraine and Ukrainian military capabilities. There is a broader intelligence failure. It's a different service in Russia, foreign intelligence, as opposed to FSB intelligence that dealt with Ukraine. The foreign intelligence failed to predict uh, the ferocity of Western sanctions. These are the most devastating sanctions in human history. And while the, the sanctions usually have a pretty bad track, track record changing uh, authoritarian governments' foreign policies to wit, Iran, North Korea, Cuba, uh, Venezuela, etc., in Russia there is a tradition that if a leader lost the war, he is out. He either dies in office or is ousted. Uh, having said that, uh, there is another failure, and that is of military leadership and military performance. All that, short of the big escalation, bodes very ill for Mr. Putin and for Russia. Might see him keeping his job, not that I would advocate that, but uh, just for the sake of the argument, uh, if Ukraine were to declare neutrality and, say, commit uh, that in the near term there's no possibility of joining NATO, uh, if, if, that, if that comes to pass, 
you know, would that satisfy Vladimir Putin or does he really want to turn, uh, you know, he wants to get rid of the government and turn Ukraine into a vassal state? Here's a challenge. Uh, there is no credible Ukrainian leadership that is capable of taking over Ukraine. The Russians do not have the troops to police it. To police a country which is bigger than France has 44, twice as big as Iraq almost. So, so in other words, isn't neutrality an option for Vladimir Putin? Yes, it is. If he really is feeling that he cannot get any place, either in Ukraine or with broader demands for essentially collapse of NATO in Eastern Europe. He is demanding that the U.S. will pull out our troops uh, and we go back to 1997 uh, status of forces of NATO, meaning all of NATO forces out of Eastern Europe. NATO will refuse to do that. Yeah. And also the demands of so-called denazification of Ukraine. When uh, three uh, out of uh, the, all the uncles of President Zelensky were killed in the Holocaust. Uh, as we know, Zelensky was, uh, is Jewish and the family is Jewish. Uh, his grandfather fought and I think was killed in World War II. It's ridiculous what Putin is talking about, the, the existence of some kind of Nazi threat in Ukraine. So that he's not Ariel. going to get. Yes. Ariel, so you know, I think what we're trying to get at here, is there a face-saving uh, way out for Vladimir Putin of this? And number two... Is he, whatever happens, a pariah on the global stage? He is definitely a pariah, and I do not see the West uh, unplugging the sanctions that took so much effort to put in, even if Mr. Zelensky agrees uh, to the neutral status. And the other thing is, is Zelensky going to accept Russian annexation of the Crimea and territories mm. in Donbass? I don't, I'm not so sure he will. I don't, mm. I'm not so sure the political maneuvering space in Kiev would allow him to do so. Yeah, and that speaks to that some of the Ukraine counterattacks have been successful. In about 30 seconds, how successful? Pretty successful. I mean, uh, <laughs> the Russians just lost their six, that's number six, general uh, in this pretty short war. I compare it to the unsuccessful Soviet uh, war in 30, 1939, 1940 against Finland, in which Finland retained its independence and the communist government Stalin was planning to impose yeah. on Finland never was imposed. So okay. this is an impressive achievement to Ukraine yeah. already, and yeah. I think this is a failure overall. Okay. Uh, can you come over later for a beer? I've got so many other questions to put to you, but uh, no, I, I got to continue with this show. And uh, I know you've got better things to do than to chat more on this subject. But uh, thank you very much. Ariel Cohen is with us, senior fellow at Atlantic Council on this uh, war in Ukraine. This is Bloomberg. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to get more content like this.